Hi, uh, my name's Gordon Moore. Uh, I'm a, a web developer. Um, I, until very recently, uh, was working on uh, the web archive here at the Internet Archive and uh, continue to advise in that role. Uh, but what I'm here to talk about today is a personal project that is really an exploration of some theories I have about what's necessary um, for reference material on the web and an experiment to test those theories. Uh, and it's uh, called, for now, uh, Infinitory. Um, and what I'm thinking about is what's past uh, the wiki encyclopedia. Any of us who uh, were reading before the web arrived, and it looks like most of this audience uh, was, but that won't always be the case, uh, probably have a fond memory of reference books uh, like these. Um, they were the way that if you didn't know what you wanted to read, you could just wander through them, open a random page, and uh, you know, be excited, uh, learn something new. Um, but I think these books have probably been hit by the web even harder than newspapers. Uh, it's hard to, to imagine the cases when you'd pick these up because, you know, if you, if you need to look up a word, I think you, you go see Google. Um, if you need to look up other facts, you go see Google. If you need to look up maps, information about geographical places, you go to Google. And if you need encyclopedic information, well, you go to Google, and then maybe also uh, you go to Wikipedia. So we really have uh, Google and uh, Wikipedia as this one-two punch that's uh, uh, taken over reference on the web. Um, and if you take a look uh, through, say, the top uh, 100, 110 Alexa sites, and just try to look at the ones in English that are really dedicated to storing reference information, as opposed to social communications or even news or, or self-publishing, but just Let's be canonical, let's be reference information. It's a pretty big drop off in, in the so-called reach. How many, how many people visit them per day? Google, obviously, uh, half the people on the net uh, visit it every day. 15% Wikipedia, and then you're down to like IMDB for movie information, Stack Overflow, Answers.com, 1%, so pretty, pretty big drop off there. So if this is what we've got, uh, let's take a look at um, what these are if we think of them as publications. Uh, what is Google? Uh, well, it's an index. We had indexes before the web, before digital technology, but it's kind of an unprecedented index. Um, it's made via uh, an algorithmic digesting of things that are found elsewhere. Uh, it takes all the text, it puts it in a blender, it finds out where that text appears, uh, and then it spits it back out at you um, in response to your queries. Uh, it's trained by hundreds of engineers, thousands of QA people, hundreds of thousands, millions of people who are using it, who are constantly training it. Uh, and it's it got a mixture of both pre-calculated and, um, and calculated on the fly material for you. Uh, and what are its artifacts? What is the output that we read, the text? Uh, well, there's both a medium length output, which is the ranked list of results, uh, both the URL that they're sort of suggesting for your query uh, and the so-called snippet um, which tries to convince you that maybe this is or isn't uh, the right text for you. Uh, and then there are the snippets themselves. They're a, a tiny, small artifact. Uh, sometimes they even answer your question directly. And they vary based on both your query and the destination URL. And so they're, they're very dynamic. And let's compare that to Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia is very self-consciously an encyclopedia. Uh, that's their banner. That's their shield. That's um, the model. It's been very important to them to have a clear identity. Uh, there's a, a great talk uh, by Benjamin Mako Hill from about a week or two ago where he analyzed all the other people who attempted to create encyclopedia-like projects at about the same time as Wikipedia and what were the differences. And uh, the number one uh, reason that he saw in interviews with all the participants was that Wikipedia was very clear that they were building an encyclopedia and they weren't doing anything else. So that's absolutely crucial to its conception. It's authored summaries. Um, it's in a common voice, uh, the individual ego, the individual author is not uh, emphasized at all. Um, tens of thousands of people have created it and uh, continue to contribute every year. And it's all pre-written. Uh, nothing's written on demand, um, not even with a short, uh, short uh, response time. And its representative artifacts are things that are medium to long. Um, articles, single article per topic. Uh, and then they have some kind of small artifacts when there's a good abstract, when the sections are broken up well, you can take off the introductory sentences, you've got sort of a way to skim things in like an inverted triangle or other, other summary writing. And so uh, 
they're great. I mean, I'm, I'm not complaining. They're better than what came before. I, I wouldn't give them up. I love them both. They're, they're treasures of our, of our current society. Wikipedia showing a, a whole new way to create things. Uh, Google showing a whole new way to find them. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there aren't uh, issues and uh, that in particular we maybe have become over-reliant on them and so are missing some other opportunities. With Google, I think some of the big issues, and these are the issues of the utility of Google, um, they're dealing with a problem of their own success. Uh, and that is uh, the rise of content that's adversarial. Um, the rise of content that is specifically made to uh, fool Google and thus fool the users of Google. Uh, in its mild form, this can be you know, white hat SEO. In its, in its uh, more negative forms, it's uh, black hat SEO. It's uh, content mills which only create content meant for the robots, meant to fool people, meant to carry advertising. Um, even if better versions of that same content appear somewhere else. So you've really got uh, oftentimes a uh, worse content that's better search engine optimized uh, pushing out uh, the better content. Uh, in particular, I, I like to call this sort of content spablum, uh, a, a combination of spam and pablum, uh, because the writing is awful. Uh, it might be a robot or it might be a freelancer who's being uh, paid pennies and uh, really has to rush out uh, 20 articles a day on whatever people are searching for. And uh, we're unfortunately approaching a time where more content may be written um, by robots and, and stringers uh, uh, to fool the Google robot uh, than for uh, people to read. And, and that could be a dangerous uh, tipping point. And a few of the other factors that come in here are, are things that I would describe as occlusion, dilution, uh, and duplication. Um, anybody who's been using Google for a long time will realize that you know, there were some queries that used to work a lot better. There were some queries where there were a few good sites uh, and you knew the magic incantation to bring those up. And now, both due to the spam, the SEO, and also simply due to the multiplication of content and voices and forums, um, those same results are occluded. Those same results have been rewritten, uh, maybe not even in as good form. Uh, and some of this is innocent, some of this is negative, but it, it kind of means that uh, uh, you're, you're lost in a bigger ocean of muck. Um, now, oftentimes, Wikipedia solves those problems with Google, right? It's, it's commercial-free content, uh, uh, well read by um, individual editors, uh, uh, boiled down to its essence. So where Wikipedia has articles, uh, it solves those problems with Google. But it has its own issues. Uh, the number of active users peaked in 2007. Um, we can argue about peak oil, but peak wiki was uh, five, five years ago, almost. Um, the, uh, the definition of encyclopedic, which got them through all of their early challenges, actually now is used to exclude a lot of content. Uh, it, it falls under an idea that sometimes is called by its supporters or by its opponents as deletionism. And it talks really about the standards which keep things out of Wikipedia. Has to reach a certain level of notability, mm, okay. Has to be verifiable, depends on what your standard is. Uh, can't be too trivial, can't be too technical. Has to be given due weight. You don't want to put things too early in the article. You don't want to bias people by saying that deserves an article and something else doesn't. And so a lot of things that are true and useful are being thrown out of uh, Wikipedia. And they're being thrown out via a process that uh, uh, its detractors would call wiki lawyering. Um, as a now mature project, it has uh, standards, it has um, practices that are somewhat opaque to outsiders uh, that involve uh, uh, nebulous ideas of consensus. And uh, if you don't make this your full-time hobby, um, you, you may get bruised uh, by the process. Uh, it's not the same way it was during its growth phase, and that's, uh, that's an important thing uh, to note. Uh, it was easy to put in a stub. It was easy to catch info. It was flypaper for knowledge. Um, everything stuck to it. Uh, now, if you deal with Wikipedia, maybe some things, some things will stick to you. Um, so, they're great, but they have issues. Everything does. Um, which brings us to uh, the theory. Uh, I think their success has blinded us to an artifact that we need and that we ought to be creating more of. Um, in particular, I think this one artifact uh, will help address some of the search side issues and uh, some of the uh, consolidating knowledge issues of Wikipedia. Uh, and uh, for inspiration for this artifact, I'm going to switch uh, 180 degrees to a totally different field. Uh, and uh, here's, here's an interesting statement and an interesting speech that was made uh, uh, 50 something years ago, uh, there's plenty of room at the bottom. 
Uh, and this was a speech by Richard Feynman, a physicist, talking about, oh, there's still plenty of work to be done in miniaturizing things, getting things down to the atomic scale and getting things down to um, writing information in, in, in tiny uh, bits. And, and we see that same thing in the computer industry and also in the content and information industry. Breaking things down into smaller parts has helped a lot. It's helped assemble new products. It's been the theme of many of the talks here. Uh, it's, it's definitely a trend that should be pursued and investigated as an as a attempt. So what is perhaps the smallest thing we could be collaborating on? Um, I think it's sort of the, the one bit of knowledge we don't know that we need at this point. Uh, it's the smallest uh, delta from uh, our current mindset to the mindset that has uh, one extra bit of information. It's what the expert who is your friend would tell you even if you didn't need to know, uh, even if you didn't know enough to ask for it, if you didn't know enough to uh, query about it. Uh, and so let's make a name for that. Uh, let's call that the thing unknown. Let's contract that into a new term. Let's call that the thunk. Thing unknown, thunk. Um, By giving that a name, um, we can also think about what its qualities might be. Uh, and uh, my suggestion is that it be natural language, so we don't need to get into formalism of uh, artificial intelligence knowledge representation, that it have a hard cap on its size. Think more like tweets, right? It's amazing how much of a conversation can happen, happen through tweets once you say, oh, I'm gonna force myself down to this size. Um, doesn't necessarily need to have a unique title or fit into an existing taxonomy. That's uh, an artifact of pre-full text search. That's when you had to list things in alphabetical order. That's when you had to uh, uh, rule things in and out and sort them. Don't need to do that anymore. We have um, full text search, we have hyperlinks. Um, and I think we should be creating a lot more of these. Sometimes they're created as part of other projects but I think uh, a dedicated effort to create just these um, will be profitable. And so, um, what if we were to create a thunk collection and compare that to uh, Google and Wikipedia? Um, it's, a, it's a big pile of disaggregated knowledge, um, and uh, it's made uh, chiefly the same way as Wikipedia, um, but it is uh, delivered uh, in a way much more like Google, as small chunks and ranked lists of small chunks. And so the output of the Infinity Project is uh, something called Thunkpedia. And uh, the tagline is the sum of all human knowledge that fits, because we allow everything in that's true and useful, uh, but we um, say that it has to fit into these tiny size limited chunks. And so let's take a quick look at what that does to the interface, because I think it opens up some new uh, opportunities. Over here. Uh, I'm going to cherry pick something that Google doesn't do a great job of, and something that, given the number of Macs in the audience, um, probably other people have dealt with. What happens when you want to do a Mac window capture? Well, you can try it. Um, you can. Uh, you can uh, uh, try to see what uh, the right way to do that is, and uh, you won't actually get the answer. Uh, you'll get um, a page full of pages which have the answer, which you can click through and then search through those pages for the answer, but you won't actually get the answer. In fact, the only fragment here is, is actually a close but not quite correct answer. So here Google has spent hundreds of words and plenty of screen real estate without giving you an answer, and the answers that it does give are uh, incredibly uh, uh, duplicated. Uh, if that is one of the thunks of information that someone has prepared because they are generous after they've discovered it, and you try a Mac window capture, you can get something that answers it in line. You don't have to leave the page. And uh, some other interesting things about here, things that are related will appear. So it's uh, like a laser-like focus on what it is you're trying to do. If you need information, you can find out the sources, always useful, but you don't necessarily have to go anywhere else. If it's a simple question that can be answered in a snippet, it should be answered in a snippet. This is a prototype. It's based on a, a Wikipedia data dump, uh, grabbing the abstracts from the wonderful DBpedia project. The, um, uh, it also makes it uh, incredibly easy to contribute. And so uh, this data dump doesn't have recent events in it. Uh, so it will be a little bit off on some things. 
if we take a look at Gaddafi, well, this is, this is a bit of outdated information. And if I want to fix it, it's very easy to narrow in on just that information. Very easy to say, present to the present day, to 2011, when deposed and killed. You can save that, as with the original Wikipedia, it's immediately live. No messing with wiki text. None of the intimidation factor of deciding is this important enough to go early or late in the article? Is it already stated somewhere else? Uh, it's, it's in there. And since you can look at the entire history of something in the page, it's very easy to analyze who did what and what changes they made. Um, the small content gives you this advantage. Uh, similarly, it's useful to look at something like recent changes in this respect. Makes it very easy for people to review other people's content. Let's compare that, for instance, to the um, the Mac screen capture at Wikipedia. Wikipedia has recently added this rate this page functionality. Now, I, I can't rate that much information, including how to do HP WebOS and, and MAMO5 screen captures. It's really the wrong unit for review. But small bits of information are the right unit uh, for review. And then uh, finally, I'll show a little bit about how easy it is to create something new. We'll go again to this um, Momar Gaddafi uh, unit. Uh, this thunk is actually a little bit longer than it should be. Um, we uh, really would want to put this historical information into a more narrowly focused bit of information. So we select it, we choose a bookmarklet, and we let that create a new thunk with that information. Brand new, now part of the search. And we go to the previous one, we get that out of that one, save it. Now we've helped decompose things into a smaller bit of uh, That's not going through. Um, so uh, this is a, an idea of how we can make it easy, again, to capture small bits of information and uh, uh, shorten the path, shorten the number of gestures that lead people to uh, the answers that they need. Um, to show one other aspect of that, I would say that with small bits of information, we can get to things that we don't even know how to query for. Um, if we were to begin with something like, um, Oh, well, let's just stick with uh, Gaddafi for a bit. And we decided that Gaddafi Stadium is not what we're interested in. We can immediately rate it. We don't have to go to a web page and then come back. It disappears. And we immediately see the things that might be of interest to us instead. And if we think that, in fact, oh, it is this person we're interested in, we'll say we want to see that. And it will immediately show us the things that dig down further. So without deciding on new terms, you might not no. Um, an implicit model behind these thunks that's built over time uh, can actually tell people uh, maybe what they need to know next and didn't know to query for. Um, I think there's a rich collection of possibilities with um, that. Let me switch back to future information. Yep, and so I think uh, creating the relationships between, behind thunks are a good possibility. I think we can finally calibrate what's shown to people based on what they already know because it's a fine-grained model, model. We can give people social reinforcement for the smallest possible actions that improve the common set of knowledge. Uh, and we can help people deduplicate this data set so uh, you'll never have to, in the same session, uh, read through the same poorly rewritten information twice. Um, that's Thunkpedia, having a pre-launch discussion at the project blog Infinitry. You can follow uh, in Thunkpedia for more information on Twitter, uh, and uh, we'll be launching soon. So I'd, I'd love to hear your, uh, your feedback, and this is going to need a lot of help uh, if we're going to build out that information. So um, thanks. Thanks, Peter.